Bajaj, the managing director of Bajaj FinServe, joins us. Uh, we had an NBFC um, uh, report that came out a while back, so let's pose that question to him. Sanjeev, hi, good morning. Uh, we had an NBFC analyst who spoke to us a few days ago, and he said that auto finance is one of the most vulnerable uh, sectors so far, and there could be further stress in this particular sector. Um, uh, your comment on the same, do you expect the stress to continue in the quarters to come? Auto finance uh, for us in Bajaj Finance accounts for about 15% uh, of our disbursals and uh, clearly it's one of the segments that is seeing a slowdown given that the underlying um, sales of vehicles has come down uh, uh, significantly in the last uh, few quarters and given the fact that um, motorcycle sales end up going more to the lower middle class and middle class this segment is facing some amount of stress what we have done as a business is to uh, shrink our exposure to the low end segment as well so that we can control the stress uh, on this book. It has gone up marginally. I would not say uh, it's anything uh, to be worried about, but clearly this is one of the almost only segments that we have other than construction equipment finance where we've seen some amount of stress. Okay, I'm going to ask you to quantify that. You said that the stress has gone up marginally in the system, but for Bajaj Finance, particularly the gross NPAs rose to about 1.15%. Um, where, where does the company see incremental stress and what is the guidance on asset quality in terms of a trend going ahead? So you see there are two things. One is uh, looking at our gross NPAs and second is uh, keeping in mind our ability to collect well uh, where are we at the net level? And the net level you saw was uh, less than uh, 30 BEPs, was 0.26% or so. Now, at the gross level, the two lights where we saw some amount of higher stress, as I mentioned, was uh, both our motorcycle financing as well as our construction equipment financing. What uh, we've done in the last few quarters is to restrict uh, the quality of customers that we are uh, financing to in this period. And we think this will help us uh, control that slightly higher stress level that we saw on these two lines. Okay. Sanjeev, uh, I just wanted to focus actually on the cost of funds. Can you just go through what cost of funds are like in this quarter for Bajaj Finance and subsequently any sort of uh, outlook on the net interest margins as well? Our incremental cost is closer to about 10% uh, or so. Uh, NIMS is less relevant for us with our diversified book uh, given that uh, if you look at a number of our businesses including consumer durable financing, our entire income comes up front. So it uh, ends up distorting NIMS to some extent. But if you look at our uh, last quarter results, our uh, return on assets were between 3.5 and 4% and we think that's a stable number. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Sanjeev, if not net interest margins, then I'm sure you can talk about the spreads. How are spreads moving for Bajaj Finance and Bajaj FinServe? You know, our spreads are not uh, reducing. They're remaining where they are. I think what's much more important is to see that as the economy has slowed down significantly over the last few quarters, uh, we are careful with our incremental lending. And that's why I believe that uh, from the uh, last... I would say six or eight quarters where we've been growing at nearly 25 percent. Um, we are looking to slow down our growth to closer to 17 to 20 percent so that we shave off, as I said, some of the lower end uh, exposure that we have in these uh, slow times and uh, keep a higher quality book. All right. Uh, while uh, the consumer and the SME has been very robust in your AUMs. Uh, uh, can you just tell, take us through uh, that trend and how it's going to uh, pan out going ahead, the consumer and the SME segment? It's mostly to do with uh, customer selection. And um, so if, if I look at our consumer business, it has slowed down, um, but it is still showing a 20% uh, growth rate. And... Um, this is because of a large number of schemes that the manufacturers are doing to keep their volumes going. As far as SME customers are concerned, we operate at the higher end of SME customers who are uh, less exposed to the current stressful environment. We are naturally careful with our credit quality there as well, but because it is the higher end of SME customers, uh, we've still, able, still, uh, still been able to grow at a fairly comfortable pace without taking on any additional stress on the book right now. 
Okay, so can you give us the company's guidance as far as AUM growth and deployment growth is concerned? Will it be as robust as Q3? No, I think the next few quarters that will come down maybe to around 20% or so. And it's only if the economy starts growing thereafter will we start growing to the higher numbers once again. Okay, Sanjeev, is that the strategy that the company will possibly focus on? Uh, you know, with asset quality, uh, you'd possibly concentrate on asset quality and slow down on aggressive loan growth or asset quality isn't as much as a problem for Bajaj Finance? It's asset quality is not an issue, but the reason it's not an issue is because we followed the former strategy that you spoke about, which is to always focus on high quality assets and if necessary, slow down growth when we see either a slowing growth environment or a more stressful environment. What about the insurance business, Sanjeev? Just throw some light on how life and general insurance business is doing because in the previous quarter, your general insurance business profit was slower, but uh, life insurance jumped quite significantly up 15%. The general insurance business um, has shown nearly an 18% growth in the first half of the year. But a large part of that business is motor insurance and we know motor vehicle sales have come down significantly. So our growth I would expect for the second half of the year to be closer to 12% and we will average about a 15% growth for the whole year. Um, margins should continue to grow uh, strongly given that it is still a steady 15% growth. As far as the life business is concerned, in the life business, because these are long term biz businesses, we take on all our expenses up front. So when we are growing, the profit grows slower than our top line. But when we slow down our top line, the profit goes up. And that's what you're seeing in the last year and this year. You've seen the profits look better because growth has slowed down. This has primarily been because over the last five years, we first had the financial slowdown, then we saw some amount of irrational competition. And then we have seen at very regular intervals uh, significant changes in regulations, which have... Uh, uh, disturbed growth in the industry. I believe all that is behind us now and uh, while we may still see muted growth in the first half of next year, I am hope hopeful that from the second half of next year we start seeing growth in life insurance again uh, in the top line. All right. Uh, well, finally then, Sanjeev, uh, the bank license uh, meets. Uh, there have been some one-on-one -on -one meetings that have been held. Uh, would you like to comment on whether Bajaj Finance has had any one of these meetings? I'm just trying to understand whether your prospects uh, of getting a bank license are higher. So you see, what I, I believe what you can't control, you shouldn't worry about. So we don't worry about this, and that's why there's nothing that I have to comment on this. All right, uh, Sanjeev, we lead, leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining in. So that's the word coming in from Bajaj Finance and Bajaj FinServe, in fact, where they expect around 15% growth in the motor insurance business and their AUM or assets under management should possibly come down to a growth of around 20% as opposed to 30% that they did in the previous quarter. But do remember that you can catch this entire interview just by logging on to moneycontrol.com whenever you like. We'll